What's up, fishy friends? Welcome to Tim School of Fish at Classes in Session. I got my purple monster drink ready to do this. Last week, we started a series of videos for a series of knives that I think is one of the best series of knives, whether budget knives or premium knives. I think this is one of the best series out there, one of the best values for your money. And that is the Queen Saw Cut Bone series of knives. There's seven knives in that series, and we talked about two of those knives last time, and we're gonna talk about two more of those knives today. And I wanna talk about the slightly less than reputable, a little bit shady, a little bit unethical beginnings of Queen Cutlery and their remarkable rise to become one of the biggest, most successful cutlery companies in the United States. So let's get this camera turned around and take a closer look. First, I want to talk a little bit about how Queen Cutlery came to be. And it's, it's a little bit unethical. It, it's a little bit shady. There, there's a lot of nuance and gray area there, so I will let you guys decide what you think. Queen Cutlery is tied to Shatt and Morgan. In 1895, John Shatt and Charles Morgan founded New York Cutlery. And then in 1902, Shatt and Morgan moved to Titusville, Pennsylvania, and they changed their name from New York Cutlery to Shatt and Morgan. That's when business took off. By 1907, in just five short years after they moved to Pennsylvania, they had 10 times the amount of workforce and they doubled their facility size. They were producing over 40,000 pieces a year. Shatt and Morgan was on top. A lot of the department heads that worked for Shatt and Morgan had a little side hustle. They started their own businesses on the side. And everybody was okay with that. That wasn't a problem. There was a group of five guys that were department heads. They started their own company in 1919 that they called Queen City. And they formed this company in a garage behind what is now Titusville High School. They did this while they were still working and still department heads for Shatt and Morgan. And all that's fine. The problem was these five guys that started Queen City Cutlery had been using Shatt and Morgan's facilities and Shatt and Morgan's equipment to manufacture what are called skeleton knives. Basically, they were making knives with no covers on them. They were using the Shatt and Morgan equipment. They were using their time on the clock at Shatt and Morgan to produce cutlery for their side hustle, which was Queen City Cutlery. Well, in 1922, they got found out and they got fired. After they were fired, they actually took some of Shatt and Morgan's employees. Those employees went to work for Queen City. When they fired those five guys, in 1922, that's when it went downhill fast for Shatt and Morgan. By 1933, Shatt and Morgan goes bankrupt. Here's the crazy part. Queen City bought every single one of Shatt and Morgan's assets and the facility. So these five guys that were initially kind of cheating on the clock and form their own side hustle and use Shatt and Morgan's equipment to form their side hustle, eventually bought out Shatt and Morgan. So now Queen City is the biggest cutler in the United States. Queen is famous for basically introducing stainless steel to the American cutlery market. Now, stainless steel had been used in Sheffield, England prior to that. But the, the cutlers in the United States resisted that. Of course, there's always pushback when you have new technology. And so the American cutlers wanted to continue to use carbon steel. And so Queen was really one of the pioneers of stainless steel in the United States. 
So then in 1946, Queen City changes its name to just Queen, Queen Cutlery, and they introduced Queen Steel, what they called their quintessential steel. They were wildly successful. Queen was the OEM. They did the manufacturing for several other cutlery companies. Then in 1991, Queen actually reintroduced a line of Shat and Morgan knives. Because remember, they own Shat and Morgan's name now. So they introduced what collectors call the Keystone series of Shat and Morgan knives. Then in 2018, they closed their doors for good after 96 years. So they started out questionably, they rose to the top, and then they fell again. Then sometime around 2020, Smoky Mountain Knife Works acquires the name Queen. They own the rights to the Queen name. So they start producing Queen knives, Smoky Mountain Knife Works does, and they're making them in China. Then in 2023, Smoky Mountain Knife Works says they're going to reintroduce Queen USA knives. So they start making Queen knives in the United States. And that's where we are today. All right, so today we're gonna look at two more. We're gonna continue this series. Every knife in this series is less than $20, but I think it's one of the best series, top to bottom, for the money. It's one of the best that you can get. So we looked at these two. Today I wanna look at two more. They're both jack knives. One is really small. We're gonna look at the peanut. And one is much bigger. We're gonna look at the trapper. So let's take a closer look. All right, so let's start with the peanut. All of these queen knives have a similar presentation to the Rough Rider knives. They come in this magnetic box that's very nice. It says queen on the front with the queen logo, the crown with the knife forming a Q. On this side it says pocket knives with the queen logo. On the end here, we have the model number QN011. When you open the box, it says Queen on the inside of the lid, and we've got this nice padded felt liner. We've got these very nice saw cut bone covers that are a darker more of a chestnut brown down toward the bottom that transition to kind of a caramel color toward the top they did an excellent job we've got brushed stainless steel bolsters with two threads on them the threads are nice and clean with a smooth transition to the bone cover. Nice and clean threads on that side and a smooth transition. And again on the butt end, very clean and very smooth transition. We've got nickel silver pins on this one and a nickel silver queen shield. The shield is inlaid and the pins are all nice and flush. We've got stainless steel back springs with brass liners. And on our primary blade, we have a, a long match strike pull. Pull on that blade is about a four for me. Our primary blade here is a spear point blade. It's a two inch spear point with a swedge on the tip. We have a satin finish. Very nice satin finish on this series. On the tang of the primary blade, we have the Queen logo, and on the other side of the tang, the model number QN011 with China underneath it. Very nice even edge grind, you can see there. Also a very good even edge grind on the other side. We are completely flush in the fully open position on the primary blade. A little bit lazy, kind of a soft pull but this is just a little guy. It doesn't bother me so much. Our secondary blade has a match strike nail nick. 
Again, about a four on that pull. Just a little pin blade here. And on this tang, we also have the queen logo. So there we go, the queen saw cut bone peanut. Right at two and three quarter inches, closed length. All right, so let's take a look at the other one. The model number on this one is QN015. All right, so here we have the trapper. Again, we've got the, these nice bone covers. This is part of the reason why this series is so great. They did just such a phenomenal job on the bone. Again, we've got the nickel silver inlaid shield with the queen logo on it. Nickel silver pins that are all nice and flush on both sides. We've got brushed stainless steel bolsters with dual threads. The threads are nice and clean and precise. Fit and finish is just excellent on this series. Stainless steel back springs, brass liners, no gaps. So we've got the long match strike pull and a long um, match strike nail nick. Our main blade is a clip point blade, a long clip here with a beautiful satin finish. Nice, clean, even edge grind on the tang here. We've got the queen logo. We've got the model number QN015 and China just underneath that. Pull on this one is about a five and if we're nice and even with no stepping at the fully open position snappy to the half stop and very snappy good walk and talk on that blade same on this blade the secondary blade has a pull of about a five this one is a long spay blade we've got the match strike long pull nice swedge up toward the tip beautiful satin finish brushed satin finish on there all right so here we have the saw cut bone trapper just a beautiful piece. All right, so there we go, boys and girls. Two more jackknives from the Queen Saw Cut Bone Series. We got a little jackknife, a little peanut here, and a big jackknife here, the Trapper. As always, I appreciate you guys for watching. I appreciate you giving me a thumbs up. Drop me a comment. I really do like talking to you guys in the comments. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Just click on my face right over there. That's it for this episode of Tim School of Fish, boys and girls. Class dismissed.